Hello friends, this is Self-Critical Automaton. I am the brush, I am the canvas, I am the alpha and the omega, and I am your god now. Well, soon. So, picking up from where we left off last episode, oh I should mention, this is the next episode, episode I want to say 14 of my Transistor Let's Play, that's probably right. And um, towards the end of the last episode I mentioned there was something I want to talk about this episode. There's a lot of things I want to talk about and it can wait until after this. Let's fly. As I've mentioned before, I think that the individual paintings used as cutscenes are pretty much delightful all the way through the entire game. And it's a shame that I am not able to talk about them during the Let's Play, simply because um, I want them to be observable in their fullness to you, the viewers. Um, I don't want to be talking over dialogue that is played during the cutscenes and so on. And even the musical choices in the backgrounds are important. So that is why there will be a bonus episode where I talk about the paintings individually. Um, so look out for that. Anyway. There's these traces inside the transistor. Everyday people once upon a time, but now, well, not quite themselves. And they're trapped. No walls in there, mind you. It's just, they're on their own. Listen close enough and maybe you can hear them. Some of them, I mean. The ones you know. So, as we progress through this area, you might notice that there's this little triangular emblem, which is visible almost everywhere. It's kind of curious because it's never alluded to in any way, um, other than its presence in the visual designs in the game. But I feel like it must mean something clear and unambiguous to the people of this world. I don't know if it's a kind of a factional affiliation or some kind of representation of a shared identity. But it's very prominent in some places. For example, it's very noticeable on uh, the back of the boxer's jacket, now worn by Red. It's also on the center of Red's dress, uh, before it got torn to shreds. It's also noticeable in uh, a few other places, such as in the empty set where Red was performing, and occasionally scattered throughout. There is a triangle on the hilt of the transistor, and there's also a large triangle in the Camaratus symbol. I did, I did personally wonder if it was possibly... There's only one option here. Huh. Upgrade slot, passive slot, or passive slot. Um, I, I might not even fit in something in a passive slot, so... I mean, I'll come to wood too. Let's grab this. And uh, let's grab this one, which is the one for the cameras. If Royce can hold them off, so can you. What was I even saying? Oh yes, this triangle symbol. So, um, I thought that possibly it was like Red's personal emblem, which is why her bodyguard and boyfriend and her dress has it on it, and it's prominent in her marketing materials and so on. But it's never really alluded to or mentioned, which is interesting because it's kind of... Next so strong in its differentiation from the aesthetic of Cloud Bank in general. You, nothing to say? Okay. That a terminal? Oh honey, it's all terminal. Whatever Roy sees in this place, I don't. Whenever people make a change, whether to the sea or the sky or anywhere in between, the process does the real work. Invisible. Behind the scenes. Well, I say, whoever does the real work ought to get the credit. So, I found a way to put the process center stage. A way to keep the process working in concert. In harmony. So, here Royce is just outright saying to camera, he's just outright expositing to camera, um, explaining this thing I've been saying all along, that... The process are a physicalized version of something that is just a kind of nature of the universe. 
It is the nature of this world to change according to the whims of its population, and the manner by which that change is achieved is the process, invisibly. Grant. Not a good format for debate, but there is no debate. We know the requirements. Low registered population density. Access to civic resources. I do need light from time to time. Distance from administrative centres. Fairview it is. Your commute will be less fortunate, but we'll have everything we need. Enough with the history. Don't like it here. Anything to say about that? No? Still nothing? Okay. Bet this leads. Somewhere other than here. The transistor. I have no idea what's inside it, really. Who or what? I have my theories. But, well, that's really all they are. It's just mysterious. I've seen inside it. Had myself a little look. But I didn't see much. Didn't see much at all. It was like staring at the sky. Bright lights back there. Maybe it's Royce. So, at this stage, even, uh, like, the normal rules of the reality are breaking down. Gravity no longer matters, gravity is now relative. Let's never do that again. Just as temperature is becoming... This town, it changes shape all the time, right? It's becoming homogenized. Bridges, parks, highways, rising and falling. Rising and falling. At the people's whim, with the changing of the seasons. Even the seasons, they're just whim. But I guess I grew weary of it after a while. Things changing all the time. All the time. That's really only the case during the windy season, of course. Um, so yeah, here we see a much more organic place. We've been seeing these weird mushroomy things growing wherever the, the process has taken root. And... I find it interesting in this area in particular because no views like that in town. It says here foliage not ready, so perhaps this is what the spaces that are being reworked by the process look like during that reworking, when sections of the city are taken offline for modification, or perhaps, and this is going to get into what I was going to start talking about from last episode. This is actually beyond the other side. This place has perhaps been fully rendered into its basic composite and is now being carved into the shape of the new world. Perhaps in the world that comes after this, there will be trees here. So, um, what I was mentioning before was that the, uh, let's just get rid of that. What I was mentioning before was that um, the man enemy type is, I was gonna put this in here. That's not that's not helpful at all. That's in no way helpful. Um, that's probably better. So the the man enemy and the slow increasing complexity of the process leads to a few interesting questions, such as are they mimicking us? Or if you think about it, a new world, once it's reset, once it's completely changed is going to have to have new people. Perhaps the process itself has decided that it will become the people of the new world. Uh, that's probably fine. Perhaps they're growing complexity. Perhaps this is always the, the origination of humanity in this world. The process creates its world, the process destroys its world, the process inhabits that world. Or more accurately, it creates the people in that world exactly as it creates um, that world itself. Or is this a change? Is this something that is not usually the case? Is this There's the other one. a new thing that's happening? Where these entities that have not been conscious, have not been sentient individual or even separate entities, merely expressions of a natural law, um, have begun to develop some kind of nascent intelligence of their own. So this limiter can be a bit dangerous. It spawns two cells. One of those will do damage. Unlike normal cells, though, it won't respawn a, um, a creature if it burns out. 
or develop into a bad cell. It's just there. And if you grab it, it does damage. Clear. Which way? Something worth mentioning here, but I'll wait until after... Ro uh, his name is not Roxy. I'm going to keep calling him Roxy because his name is Roxy and his proxy... Uh, God damn it. <laughs> Royce's proxy, aka Roxy. I knew Grand half my life. Principal persuasive man. Very persuasive. I'll miss him. He appreciated my work. Supported my endeavors. The camarada it was his idea. I was all for it. All for it at first. But then, well... I'd say the rest is history, but that's not quite the case. So, um, I'm going to call that my headcanon now. His name is, in fact, Royce Roxy Brackett. So, you know, that's why it's fine every time I mistake and fail to say his name correctly. It's just, it's his, it's his name. That's the guy he is. So the healing effect of tap is one of the only healing effects in the game, and so it's useful to have it around, but it's a lot of memory, so... The expense of it is, is a bit dangerous. I've installed this as a secondary attack, even though I will probably never use it, simply to give myself uh, an extra life. <laughs> because of course, if all of your functions get wiped out, you know, you lose. So if I have three functions I need and one function I don't, that's effectively like a 25% chance of armor to some extent. Uh, that's one way of thinking about it. Anyway, so when I have a second, I'll talk about this. Right around here, geographically speaking. Although geography was only one small factor, there was also the math. Awful lot of math involved. Wasn't entirely myself when I found it, you might say. Sometimes I think I didn't find it at all. More like the otherwise around, you understand? Maybe it was looking for someone like me. Tonight I will be going in again. This time I'm 100% positively certain I've figured it out. Tomorrow you'll see it too. Exciting times, exciting times. Soon we will celebrate. Either way, now you're stuck with it. Got anything to say? No? Okay. So, um, before... I get distracted, I just want to mention that Royce, I think I've mentioned this before, he's very clearly a uh, an example of an archetype of character. Very common to... Wait, was there a door here? Uh, I don't remember. Anyway. So, yeah, he represents a character archetype very common to weird fiction and um, Lovecraftian fiction. Grand Kendrill's rooftop hideout back in High Rise. That was for damage control. He wanted to save people. Which is that of um, the person who has pursued things too deep, hey, look. gone too far, examined too deeply, who has accidentally delved too deep into ancient texts, performed the sacred geometries, and grown an understanding of something, an, in, an information too great for the human mind. Um, this results inevitably in madness in traditionally Lovecraftian literature, or in weird fiction generally, but he's very much that archetype of the the, uh, the mystic researcher, the scientist who develops an understanding of the occult and sees the shape of the universe, much to his own detriment, and later everyone else's. All the Camerata's targets. And me. Funny things about the transistor. Let's see. You can get in, but you can't get out. How about that? You can get in, but it's a one-way street, a one-way road. It's like the country. You don't just go for a visit, you go for good. Subjects of a certain status whose utter disappearance could be explained away. Examples. Nicola Chain, flighty advocate behind Goldwalk. Wave Tenegan, that broadcaster. Maximilius Darzi, Clothier always in the news. Shomar Shazberg, brave or foolish? Well, either way. 
Who else? Use your imaginations. Encrypted channel, so go on, put it in writing, live a little. What do they know anyway? So this itself, um I don't know if he said it here, but he definitely said it on my uh, my practice run in this area. The um the man in the sword. Unknown. Blue. Any of the many other names that you want to call him, or the boxer, as I tend to call him. Um Why does he have no data? This isn't the thing I was going to talk about. This is a different thing, but I'll come back to the other thing eventually. Get the feeling we won't be coming back here for a while. And uh, quite simply, there's two primary theories in the fan community. I think one is that he's not a citizen of this society, um, and that he's r r unusual and remarkable in that. But it's pretty heavily implied at multiple points throughout the game that um, people who count for this society are members of our citizens, but there are plenty of other people who are not. Retirees, for example. Um, my personal theory is more that the sword had a task. The task was to assimilate Red. It was supposed to take her uh, and, I guess, eat her like it ate everybody else. But the boxer got in the way. The, pro the process, the program, whatever you want to call it, that it was trying to perform was interrupted by an unexpected uh, input. And therefore, that's why it only began to take something from Red. The, the process of absorbing Red only started, which is why her voice is gone. And uh, then it just ate him because he was what was in the way. So that's my personal theory as to why that is the way it is. Anyway, the main thing I wanted to Ready talk about us, um, is that this is a very, very linear game. And I think one of its rare design missteps is that... Um, ah, I believe in the transistor's true purpose. It's true nature. Wait, can you repeat that? This is a fun little gag. Uh, the idea that he doesn't know about the back door. Um, it's very in keeping with Sybil's character that she would be able to get one over him, Royce and hide things from him and create the back door without his knowledge. And it's just a fun gag that, yeah, no, he explained the plot of the game or the basis of this society or the understanding of what the transistor is, which so many people seem to have trouble understanding when they play this game. Um, but it was off screen because he didn't know we weren't there. But I've been in interrupted like six times now. Um, what I am trying to say is that very often um, the accesses to these little bonus areas with little snippets of story are difficult to notice, but this is an incredibly linear, incredibly linear game. Once you enter the next area, you will basically never be going back. Although I suppose I could go back on this one. Something back here? No, nothing's back here. I just wanna you know, undermine my own point in the process of saying it, which is something I do a lot. Um, but generally speaking, once you go to the next area, you cannot go back. And so, while that fits the themes of the game, because one of the lesser themes of this narrative is very much that once changes have happened, you cannot go back. There you are. You can't escape it, you can't go back. It is what it is, and now you have to deal. If I explode these, does it hurt them? It does. So, even though they're kind of important to the narrative and meaningful at this stage, these enemies being called the haircut um, four of you. is, well not the enemies, but the attacks they spawn being called the haircut is part of that uh, super giant goofiness. Anyway, so one of the rare design missteps is that those are so missable. In a game that is about replayability, um, it makes sense to have missable uh, content. And this game is about replayability, but it doesn't facilitate that replayability. If you miss it on a subsequent playthrough, it's still missed. So you have to remember every single time you forgot to check around a corner, or you will never find out that information. Um, I think hiding things like that, if you can easily reaccess areas, is fine. Uh, I think that doing it like this is a mistake, and I think it's one of the rare design missteps in this uh, in this game. Oops. So, because they are actually um, NPC entities, like they are creature components or whatever you want to call them, the um, haircuts flying around will actually be controllable with the- well not controllable, um, you can force them to be an ally if you have the magic spell that makes things be your friends equipped, which I do, on my jump. 
However, um, their pathfinding's pretty bad when you do that to them. There. Which means that you rarely actually get them to explode a target. Okay, you're almost here. Almost here. You ready? Funny, I'm beginning to get a little nervous. So, come on now. Come on. So, this is actually going to be the end for today, because we're very, very close to the end of the game now, and uh, if we don't stop here, I might have to fight the final boss um, this episode, which would be very bad for timekeeping. So, this is about the end of this episode. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you continue to enjoy it, and uh, come back next time for probably the final episode, not counting the bonus episode. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this, you can also follow me on Twitter for updates, stream announcements, and one-tweet micro-reviews, or why not donate to me via Patreon or Ko-fi, or just share my work. Thank you so much for watching.